Hey everyone, this talk is about barriers for succinct arguments in the random oracle model. My name is Elon Yogev and this is joint work with Alessandro Chiesa. Let me start with an informal overview of succinct arguments in this model. So here we have, we have a prover, we have a verifier, and they communicate in an interactive protocol to decide if X is in the language. They both have access to a shared common resource, and this is a truly random function. What is magical about these protocols is that the communication complexity is what's called succinct. It's extremely short, and in particular, much shorter than the size of the witness. The soundness is computational, meaning the following two requirements. So we have completeness, which says that there exists an honest prover that can convince the verifier that X is in the language with probability 1. And for soundness, it means that if X is not in the language, then no matter what adversary you choose, if it makes up to T queries to the random oracle model, the probability that it wins and convinces the verifier is at most epsilon. In general, the definition talks about an interactive protocol and our results, all of our results in this paper hold for interactive protocols, but for simplicity, most of the time, I'm gonna talk about succinct non-interactive arguments or for short snugs. So why are we focused on this random oracle model? Well, it's a very elegant information theoretic model. And because of such, it lets you prove lower bounds, which is usually quite hard to do outside this model, and uh, is what we do in this work. Moreover, it supports well-known constructions of snugs in the random oracle model. If you want to take your construction outside this model into the real model, what you can do is you can heuristically implement a function. We have many such candidates. They usually, they usually use relatively lightweight cryptographic hash functions, and then you get a heuristic construction in the standard model. These constructions are also plausibly post-quantum secure, and actually for the constructions we have, it, been, it has been explicitly shown that they are post-quantum secure, in the random oracle model, of course. So what are these constructions? We have two constructions. We have Mikali at 94, and more than 20 years later, BCS. This is Ben Sasson, Kiesa, and Spooner. They both work in the same paradigm. They take an information theoretic proof. This is a PCP or an IOP. And just a short reminder, a PCP is a proof that the prover provides, and the verifier reads only locally, so reads only a small number of bits from the proof. An IOP is simply an interactive uh, generalization of PCP. So after this happens, the verifier can send some message back to the prover. The prover sends another message, and again, the verifier only reads a few bits from this. So they take this information theoretic proof. They combine it with a cryptographic commitment scheme that supports local opening. This is these are usually what's called a Merkle tree. And together, they compile this into a non-interactive succinct argument. So our starting point of this work is looking at these state of affairs and asking, why aren't there other constructions? We have this strong model. Why don't we have more constructions? Why do all of them rely on this relatively heavy machinery of a PCP or an IOP? So now let me state our results. So first we show that you can take any succinct argument in the random oracle model, and you can distill from it an interactive oracle proof, an IOP. This is our first result. Moreover, the parameters of this IO, I, IOP are gonna be very closely related to the parameters of the succinct argument, and we'll see more about this. Then our second result shows that it uh, gives limits on the soundness of interactive oracle proofs. 
in particular if you have a very good IOP you get a very fast algorithm for three sets. Combining these we're able to show that if you start with some too good to be true snug you get a too good to be true IOP which is a very fast algorithm or SAT and if you assume ETH the exponential time hypothesis which is a standard complexity assumption then you get a contradiction ruling out the existence of this uh, snug to begin with so that was an overview of our results and now I want to tell you about them in slightly more detail so the first result IOPs are inherent for succinct arguments in the random oracle model. So you start with a succinct argument and you can really distill an IOP. And not only that, the parameters that you're going to get here are very closely related to the parameters of the succinct argument. A few more terms mainly aimed for experts. If you start with a pre-processing snog, you end up with a holographic IOP. And if you start with a snog with a stronger soundness notion that we introduce and call salted soundness, which mainly says that the cheating prover can query some X, get the response Y, and if he doesn't like it, he can ask to resample this response. So if you start with this strong notion, you get the strong notion of state restoration soundness which is the soundness notion you need when you compile IOP back to snogs. So I want to go slightly deeper into the parameters. So just I want to reconsider the prover adaptivity parameter. This is the number of query rounds that the honest prover makes to the random oracle. So of course the honest prover can make the queries one by one but in the constructions we have actually this is perf performed in a few rounds so in each round the prover can send a list of queries so x1 to xn and then he gets back a list of responses y1 to ym and after seeing these responses he goes and decides on the next list of queries uh, to ask the oracle so as I said, in all known constructions, this adaptivity parameter, which we denote by A, is actually quite small. It's log N. So now going back to our result, if you start with a snug with argument size AS, argument size, VQ verifier queries, PQ prover queries, and adaptivity A, you end up with the following IOP. So I'm mainly going to talk about these two parameters. So what is the proof length? The proof length is PQ plus AS. So AS is the argument size. So of course, we're going to have the argument uh, here. But you cannot expect to have only this because the argument is succinct. And you, we do not expect the IOP to be succinct. So we have the prover queries here, which is some arbitrary polynomial uh, in the witness length. The mo more important parameter is the query complexity. So this we want to be, we want this query parameter to be small. So this is a yes. So the verifier would need to read a yes. So we need to read the argument itself. Uh, so that's at least a yes bits, or just one query if you consider a larger alphabet. Plus we need VQ times A. So for every query of the verifier to the random oracle, we need to read A bits from the proof. Uh, there is an incomparable result of what Bloom Badan. They showed that PCPs are inherent in succinct arguments, but they consider succinct arguments that were obtained by a black box reduction to falsifiable assumptions. In particular, the, re the result does not include constructions in the random oracle model. And most constructions outside the random oracle model actually use non-falsifiable assumptions. But the two results somehow complete, uh, complement each other. So I want to move on to 
theorem number two, result number two. So this is limits on IOPs and PCPs. Our main question here is how, how high can the soundness of an IOP be? Okay, and the theorem says the following. So suppose that 3SAT over n variables has the following IOP. It has soundness error epsilon. It has k rounds, okay? The proof length, the entire communication is L over some alphabet sigma. And the query complexity is Q, okay? So these are just the parameters. Such that this condition holds, okay? And this condition merely says that it's a non-trivial IOP, okay? Because if you read n bits, then really you could have just read the entire way, satisfying assignment, okay? So just really saying that this is a non-trivial IOP. Then you cannot have too good, too high soundness. So the soundness error epsilon cannot be smaller than 2 to the minus Q log L. If it is, then ETH is false. Okay? Let me just mention that we have an analog result for deterministic languages. Okay? If you're interested, you can look at the paper. And this actually matches and generalizes the sliding scale conjecture. Okay? So even for IOPs. Uh, in particular, it rules out constant query PCP or IOPs with 2 to the minus S soundness, okay? Even if your alphabet has size much larger, so polynomial in that, 2 to the O of S. We said that our two results imply barriers for snarks in the random oracle module. These barriers are going to be in the form of barriers on the verifier query complexity. So let's think for a minute. How small can the verifier query complexity be? It would be really wonderful to have snarks where the verifier makes 10 queries to the random oracle model. This is in particular important when you make non-black box use of the verifier. So you need the code of the verifier where you replace the random oracle with some instantiation some hash function, then every query really blows up the code to, to be huge. This is in particular important when we talk about recursive composition. So our corollary says that it's very unlikely to have such snarks where the verifier makes 10 or a small number of queries to the random oracle. So let me state this slightly more formally. So if you start with a snug with S bits of security, and here this is really a shorthand just to say that if you make two to the S queries, then the probability of winning is at most two to the S, and our security parameter is O of S. Okay, so think, think of S as like 128 bits of security. And the verifier complexity is VQ, and the prover adaptivity is A. If this condition holds, VQ times A is little o of S, then you get a very, very good IOP, which implies a very fast algorithm for 3SAT, and this contradicts ETH. Actually, uh, very recently, uh, we improved this to the mere condition that the query complexity of the verifier is sublinear in S. So this rules out snugs with a, a small number of queries. Okay. So that was an overview of our result. And now I want to give an overview of a proof. So this is the transformation from snug to IOPs. So on the left hand, we have a snug here. So again, this is just one round. Okay. On the right hand, we have an IOP. And we want to transform this creature to this creature. And notice the differences. So this creature has a, a random oracle. And here, we do not have any random oracle. OK, this is an information theoretic object. Uh, this is short. The messages here might be long. But the verifier reads only a small number of locations. 
So I'm going to start with a Stroman proof. It will give us what we want with bad complexity measures, and then we'll see how to improve them. So we start with a snog. So this is how it looks like. We want to get rid of this random oracle, because an IOP doesn't have a random oracle. So we're going to push this oracle to the verifier. And so the verifier is going to have this oracle in his head and simulate it for the prover. So what does that mean? The prover, whenever he wants to make a query, she, she queries x1, and the verifier is going to respond with y1. The prover is going to take this as the answer of the random oracle and query x2, and so on. Finally, the prover uh, gets the final argument pi and sends it to the verifier. Now, what does the verifier do? Well, he got this argument pi, so he wants to run the argument verifier on this. The only question is how to simulate queries for the argument verifier. And the important thing is that we want to simulate queries consistently with the queries that we gave to the prover. Okay, just simulating queries is easy, we can just answer randomly. But we want this to be consistent with the answers we gave to the prover. So this is what we're going to do for, suppose the argument verifier performs a query x. We're going to find around i, where xi equals x. Okay, if no such round exists, then we really can just answer randomly, that's fine. But if we found such an uh, around, then we, we're going to use yi as a response. There is a small problem here, but an important problem. We must make sure that x was not queried twice. Uh, so this is not allowed in the random oracle. We do not want to allow the prover to query x, get a response, say, hmm, you know what, I don't like this response so much. So let's query x again and get a, another response. So the solution is to go over all other rounds, okay, and verify that what was queried there is not the query that we're looking at. So at this point, let me just say, this is a valid IOP, okay? We have completeness and we're gonna have very good soundness. The problem is it's complexity. So first the query complexity, well, we read the entire transcript. So it's not really an IOP, it's a very laconic IOP. And second, the round complexity is also huge. So we have a round for every query. So fixing the round complexity, that's actually easy. Why? If you go back, you remember we talked about the prover adaptivity. So we just use that. And we let the prover send many queries at once. So he sends m queries at once and the verifier just responds with m answers. Then when he gets that, he can send the next list of queries and so on. Uh, so the round complexity is really going to be very close to the, just the prover adaptivity. But here still the, the, the verifier reads the entire transcript. So this is our main challenge now. Okay, the main challenge to get small query complexity is the following. You're given x, and we're given some round j, doesn't matter. And we need to verify that x was not issued in round j. Okay, so think of this as round j. We want to verify that x is not here. Verifying that x is here, that's easy. The prover can just point us to the location of x, and we can read it. Okay, so we can just locally read it and, and we don't have to read the entire message. But we want to make sure that x is not here. And for that, we're going to have to ask the prover for some additional help. Okay, but that's fine because this is an IOP and I can use the power of IOP. So we're going to make use of a perfect hash function. So this is a family, a small family of hash functions from some universe to O of M for a parameter M. And we say that this is perfect if for every subset of size M, there exists at least one hash function in the family that is perfect on S. Okay, 
there's a, a famous construction, the FKS construction. Uh, you might have learned it in undergrad. It uses two levels of hash functions. You first have the first level, then you hashed in, you're hashed into some bucket. And in that bucket, you can read a secondary hash function, uh, which uh, solves any collisions. The one thing that is important about this construction is that we observe it has an addition, additional locality property. So to evaluate H on any specific element X, you only need to read a few bits from H. And this is very important because H might be very big. It's actually uh, at least M bits, okay? Actually more than that. But if I want to evaluate H on one location X, I don't need to read the entire description of H. It suffices to read a small number of bits from H. And this is because of the two level of hashing. So I only need to read the first level. And then in the second level, which is huge, I only need to read the hash function for my bucket. So how do we use this? We ask the prover, could you please um, take the set of elements you want to query in this sound and just put them in an array of size O of n according to this perfect hash function. So find a hash function that is perfect for the set of queries and you can actually find this uh, very efficiently. And then he takes x1, computes h of x1, and writes it in the, in the correct location. This gives local access to the prover and also to the verifier. So the verifier now, if he wants to search for x1, he directly goes to here. So he reads a few bits from h to evaluate it and then directly, directly goes here. So let's see the entire protocol. The prover is gonna send h1 and then an array with the queries that he wants, okay? Many places in this array are gonna be empty. That is totally fine, okay? The array is larger than the, the set itself. The verifier does not look at this and just answer with an array of the same side, size with completely random strings. This is interpreted in the following way. The response for x2, for example, is this y7. And the response for x1 is this y3. Okay, so just the same location, the same index in the, in the arrays. So this would be called t, and this is t prime. And then we go into the next level. He finds a perfect hash for the next, next set of queries. This is t2. We answer with uh, t prime, 2, and, and so on. So what do we do on a query x? We find a round i where we take the array of this round, we look at only this position h of x, and we verify that x is written here. Then we take the corresponding y, so the same location the array only for t prime, and this is the response y that we use. And then we're going to verify that for all the other rounds, this location in the array does not contain x. So this will make sure that he didn't issue x twice. So notice that we're, we are querying every round of the protocol, but there are only a few rounds, okay? This is the prover adaptivity. And for every round, we're only querying O of one uh, symbols, okay, per round. So the, the final query complexity of the protocol is very small. One thing to notice is the verifier does use a lot of randomness in this protocol, and this is actually inherent. But the important bit is that he has only local access to his own randomness. So he's going to read his own randomness only locally. He, he never reads this entire uh, long string. Okay, this completes uh, the proof for our first result. So let me just summarize. We have shown that succinct arguments, any succinct argument in the random oracle model implies an IOP with corresponding parameters. If the snarg was too good to begin with, the IOP has too high soundness, which implies a fast algorithm for 3SAT, which plausibly does not exist. 
So this gives barriers for the query complexity of the verifier in snags and the random oracle model. And let me end with an open problem. Another very important complexity measure is the argument size. Okay, the argument size of these snags. And we ask the question, can our techniques be used to lower bound the argument size of any snug in the random oracle model? And we actually believe the answer should be yes. Thank you very much.